Hi, this video is to show using Power Panto on a live quilt and not just demo mode. So we're going to go into Panto there and we need to change the mode to Power Panto. And the first thing we want to do is set the, the width there. And I'm moving my needle for the initial measurement. Um, I want to stitch close to half an inch outside. And then I'm at the intersection of where I want the topmost stitches to hit. So I've got my needle over, over this intersection there, and I'll touch the left side of that slanted green line. That's the, that's the one you want chosen there. And now we're going to go over to the other side, and I don't have to stay up at the top. I can be anywhere along the right side that I want the um, rightmost stitches to hit. So... Um, I drew a line there so it'd be fast, and I will touch there. All right, so now um, I need to touch this black sewing machine, and it's going to give me my center mark. So I'm going to do that. And it will ask me if the needle is up. And now I've got my center mark here, so I'm just going to put that little that right there and say apply measurement okay so now I have my center mark there I need to give it the height so this quilt is it's roughly 58 or 59 inches so I'm gonna go I'm just gonna say 60 give it a little extra there and I'm gonna select my pattern Go up into panels and urban elements, and I'm choosing one called Malachite. So I'm going to open that one. This one stitches really fast. Um, when it first opens up, this is very jumbled on top of each other. Sometimes all you need to do is just add a little vertical spacing, and you're good. Um, if you touch the little magnifying glass with that blue plus on it and touch somewhere down the line, you're able to see it. Because this is a very busy, tight pattern, I'm going to change um, this, this pattern height. And I can do it by touching the plus, or I can just go ahead and, and, and touch on the number and I get the keypad. So I'm going to see what 10 and a half looks like. And, and I like that. And I'm going to blow it up more. Maybe that's too much. Um... The, the plus on the vertical spacing is, is what separates the lines, but I, I don't want to be able to see the gutter between them. So maybe I'll do a little bit more. And I'm going to X back out and go into options. And the show grid is checked, and I'm going to say OK. So now I can get an idea of, of inches here. It just makes it a little easier to visualize. So... I think I think I'm going to go with that so I can go back into there and touch fit and the X and that takes me back to the um, original screen and I could play around with these domino things but um, mm, ah, I don't think I want that so I'm going to touch the the red X by the flip and that takes me back to what I had so at this point, I could touch by pattern fitting. The, this has to do with how the wrap looks, horizontally or vertically. So if I touch this one, I can kind of look down the edges and see how that looks. Then I can touch the other one and see how that looks. And I don't think I would want all those little tiny things there. So I definitely don't want that one. So I can either select either one of these or not have either one selected. So I'm going to take this off and see what I think it looks pretty much the same. So I'm going to leave it like that. And I'm going to say save Panto. I'm going to enter a file name. So I think I will call this one race cars. Race. Just whatever, whatever name you'll be able to use and, and associate with this um, quilt. So we'll say enter and save. Okay. And just to make sure I saved it, I could go into read Panto because that would be where I would open it up 
if I had to stop and come back. So we're going to open it up and there it is. There's my race cars. So we're going to say cancel. But now I know that I have it saved. And I know that if I were to stop for the night and shut everything down, that when I open back up tomorrow, I could touch Read Panto and there it would be. Another thing I can do is touch Show Safe Area. And this gives me an idea of how much is going to be able to quilt at one time. Of course, that's going to be a partial row at the top there. But this is a nice amount to have stitched. So um, I like that. So we are ready now to sew in zones. Depending on how many rows you have is, is how much time that's going to take to do that. And I'm going to say no to this question because I know I already have it saved. I want to go into Zone Manager, and it gives you a warning that if you've already placed your pattern, you'll have to replace it. But we definitely want to go in there. And, and this is where um, I know that it's going to start stitching with zone number one. Again, if I were to stop for the night and need to come back again the next day, I would make a note of what zone I had gotten to. And if I had finished zone five, then I could leave myself a note saying start with zone six. And then I could just come in here and arrow down to zone six and say, okay. And that's what it would start quilting. And I'm going to take it back up to one. Um, the zone scale percent width is 100 since this is a rolling rail frame height. Um, I have a Kinect 21, so it's a 95. 90 is the suggested number for a Kinect 15 or 14 plus. If you'll notice the zone size max, that is in inches. So that 15.75, that's reflective of what is the quilting height that's available between the rails. So that 95 is, is not a, a number that you set and forget, so to speak. It's a number that you can um, change around if you want to see a different amount of inches right there. Um, the zone placement, we want it to be the center. Um, each zone is going to stitch from left to right with this selection. The sewing direction back and forth, the, the first one would mean that each, each row would stitch from left to right. And, and you would have to end, end each, each row and restart the next one that would keep you from having a big jump stitch. But, um, and then the next one is back and forth, which means the first row would stitch across and then you would get a jump stitch down to the next one and then it would sew back across and keep doing that. And with continuous, which is what I'm going to choose because I'm going to be stitching off the edge of this quilt. And that means it's going to stitch across and then it's going to stitch a straight line down out in the margin and then stitch back across and however many rows that um, my the stitching area allows is, is how many rows will stitch. But I'll get that straight line stitch connecting each row at the end. So we're going to go with that and we're going to go into settings and I can choose slow or medium or fast and um, stitches per inch. So. I'm going to start out with slow since we have a lot of um, stopping and, and, well, not really stopping, but just little short things up there at the top. So we're going to say, okay. And now I'm ready to place my pattern, my design. So I'm moving my needle up here over that dot. And I'm going to touch there. And that makes those um diamonds light up blue so you know it's been placed when you see those light up and we'll come over here and i could say trace just to make sure of everything getting off to a good start needles up so certainly that started on the left so i'm going to say stop I could say trace from end if I wanted to check at the other end, but I think I'm good. So I'm just going to go ahead and say pull bobbin. Take my single stitch. And so. So the first partial row has um, completed stitching and we're ready to pull the bobbin. 
And you want to be sure you pull the bobbin before you touch finish zone. And it takes it um, a few seconds to give you your screen. Um, so I am going to release the carriage. I could do move away and move back if I wanted to take my, my stitch, uh, pulling the bobbin like within the quilt top, but I'm out in the edge, so I don't have to be so accurate. So I'm going to say release carriage. And now I can physically move my machine, move it back fairly close, single stitch, and move it away again and clip it. So now I'm done with that. And I can say back. And now I'm ready to say finish zone. And have I completed? Yes. The needle is up. Okay, and I'm just using a marker. I could use um, the single stitch or a sewing mark or pull the bobbin, but I'm just going to be lazy and do this. Or I could use a piece of tape, um, but I'm going to wash this quilt. And I have I haven't had issue with these washing out, so um, that's what I'm using. So I'm going to say continue, and it's in a panic because it thinks I didn't do anything. But yes, I'm good. So... Now the machine is going to move up to roughly where um, the stitching will, will start. And um, the distance that, that you see here, that's allowing for buildup on the take-up rail as, as the, the quilt progresses being quilted. So that's why you see that, that distance right there for now. Um, I don't have to, um, when I advance my quilt, I can go ahead and advance it because I'll be able to... Um, to to move my um, machine wherever I want it and I've got my mark so that's what that is and so now I'm going to advance my quilt and reset my zone and I'll be back so we're down at the bottom and ready to stitch the very last zone so I have the needle over the mark that I made when the last zone finished so I'll set that and now the blue diamonds have lit up and I don't know where this line is, and I, I, I don't even care, because all I need to do is move my needle down to where I want the lowest stitches to hit, and then touch the partial diamond box. And, of course, I get the out-of-safe area, which is okay, but now I'm going to get a straight line stitch across the bottom, and there's no optimizing. You, you don't have to optimize any when you do a power panto. So that's one of the things that makes it very quick and simple. So now I'm ready to pull bobbin and sew. And so that's just how fast and simple a power panto is. Love it.